guys, um, welcome to notebook sample number five. Um, here's some tools that we'll be using this time. Um, you're gonna need your just basic sloper with the one dart. Um, it calls for a notch or an awl at the end, just I don't know, to kind of after we add seam allowance and whatnot. It's not mandatory, it's a, totally fine if you don't have these tools, but um, if you do, pull them out, we'll use them. Um, scissors, pencil, scotch tape, and ruler, of course, and then some kind of dotted paper, or again, it could be any paper, really. Um, dotted paper is just the classic pattern drafting one. Okay, so you'll want to open your book to page 103. The name of this technique is dart clusters and dart equivalents. Um, so step one is to trace the basic bodice. Again, it's in the back of your book. Um, I just printed out a photocopy of it and I actually went ahead and I cut it out. Um, then they want us to square a guideline out from each dart leg one inch below the bust point. Okay, so now you have to remember we're working on half scale. So what is half of one inch? Hopefully you said half of an inch, right? And hopefully you can find that on your ruler. Um, next thing is, where is the bust point? Right there. And then where are the dart legs? Here's one dart leg, here's one dart leg. Okay, great. So I'm going to move some of this out of the way, grabbing my ruler. Okay, so half an inch is right, you know, basically, here is straight line. And then it wants it half an inch along the dart leg as well. So actually in this ruler, if I get it marked at the dart point, I have it half an inch running. I kind of just do that. Oh, there's my line. So I actually only need it right there. Let's do this side as well. Okay. Um, so we that okay so we're drawing our parallel slash lines to the guideline that's one inch from the dart legs and then it's an option if you want to taper them to three fourths inch at your waistline they're claiming it's going to make a slimming effect so right now it's only one inch again we're on half scale so half inch but according to the book this line is one inch at the waistline but they're saying you could bring it in three fourths inch so you could do half three fourths which i guess is three eighths if you want it. So it wouldn't be a parallel line, it'd be kind of at an angle. I'm just gonna follow along with the book this time, but they just kind of threw that out there as an option. They want us to connect this line to the bus point. Um, okay, and now we are gonna cut the pattern from paper, but I actually did already do that. So I'm just gonna move on to the next step which is to cut our slash lines to, but not through the bust point. Okay, let's get my scissors. Okay, there's one. Great, there's the other. Um, okay, um, place on paper and spread equally and secure. So I guess we're just kind of eyeballing it. Now, you know what? I think they didn't tell us to do this, but I think we're also gonna have to kind of slash right here with our scissors. Right, it kind of allows the dart to move a little bit better. Okay, go ahead and secure this guy. All right, so draw the dart legs as follows. The middle dart, um, they want us to center our dart point half an inch below our guideline and then draw the legs to the waist. So half of half an inch would be one fourth inch. So this was our guideline that we originally drew. And so I'm just gonna do a quarter inch and then I draw the dart legs just to match each one. There we are. And then it's a little bit different for the sides. So the outer dart legs, mark your dart points half an inch below 
on one side of the slash line. Draw the dart legs equal in length um, of the middle dart leg. Okay, so they want us to measure this and make sure our dart legs are the same length. And they are having us measure half an inch. Again, we're on the half scale, so quarter. That's gonna be our dart point from each side. It kind of goes where like the middle one was in the middle, but this one, they wanted us to do it against one of these legs, not the other one. You can kind of see that in the illustration. It's highlighted in blue. Okay, and then let's measure this guy. One, two, three, four inches is what I have. It's four inches, so they want this dart leg also four inches. And then this one to be four inches as well. Let's get that there. Okay, so you kind of see it's like, it kind of looks like it's just right at the edge, but maybe it's like a teeny tiny more. Okay, so this guy, oh. okay, so this one, it's a little bit longer. It kind of looks like it's right there at the edge, but wow. It's like barely longer. Okay, um, great, there you go. Um, that's basically it. So then it just wants us to add our seam allowances and cut from the paper. So, oh, and then they actually, um, they do a nice job illustrating folding this dart together and then um, drawing in the waistline. So I think I'll go ahead and demonstrate that as well. Um, so let's see here. I'm gonna decide not to add seam allowances around my pattern because I really like to add them on the muslin for these notebook samples just so students can see where the sew line is. But I will add the seam allowance at the bottom waist like the book. So the book kind of does this to kind of get ready to add the seam allowance at the waist. Okay, I'm grabbing this tool. Okay, so then they have us close our darts. It's always so fun to do on paper. And then I'm just gonna temporarily put a little tape on it. Is there so good done? There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my door, my darts have been closed, kind of like they've been sewn together. And then, um, you know, I can use this to mark the sew line and then measure whatever my seam allowance is below that. Um, so I don't have a cork board. I'm working from home because of COVID, but I do have this cutting table. So maybe I'll use that, this cutting board, I mean. Okay, and then uh, what else I can do is I can just mark, I'm gonna put a half inch seam allowance. Okay, and then I'm going to cut on my half inch seam allowance here. It seems it's the extra paper I added. Okay, now I'm gonna take my tape off. Probably mm -hmm. should have secured this a little better. There we go. Okay, so 
I just need to add more seam allowance here at the waist actually. It looks like I kind of messed up there. It's too big of a deal. So anyways, with these dots, you can see are the sew line here. And they're kind of at a slight little angle. Um, but I mean, it'll be, when you sew it, it's actually going to be like straight. But there it is. So now all you have to do is label it and cut it out of muslin and sew it up. And again, I know it's still kind of new in the semester. Um, you can trace this with a Sharpie on your muslin and trace your sew lines. So you can really see where your sew lines are. I actually think that's very helpful in an educational environment. I know it's not something you would do if you're actually gonna wear this garment, but I don't think any of you guys are gonna fit in this garment, so we don't have to worry about wearing it. It's just for learning. Um, so if you draw with a Sharpie, trace this guy, um, maybe a red Sharpie, and then add seam allowance on the muslin, maybe with a black Sharpie, um, then you can really see your sew lines and you just get an extra, extra accurate um, fit, you know, to see how, what the sample looks like once you sew it together. Um, that's an option. So anyways, looking forward to seeing how this turns out for you.